Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Dr. Pepper. Two programs on the rise in the ACC in recent years, meeting tonight in Winston-Salem, the 7-3 Wolfpack of NC State and the 6-4 Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Clemson won the ACC Atlantic. This game could decide who finishes second. Wake is bowl eligible for the second straight year. NC State on pace to reach seven league wins for the first time in team history. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the ballpark. Alongside Kirk Morrison, I'm Clay Matthick. Should be a fun night. Both of these teams coming off wins. They're rivals. They still have a lot to play for. How do they get it done? Well, for NC State, they get it done with nine senior starters on defense, including Bradley Chubb, the potential top 10 NFL draft pick come next year. When you talk about Wake Forest, how do they get it done? Well, they get it done with a guy in which I call Mr. RPO. That's John Walford, the quarterback. 700 yard plus yards for this offense last week for Wake versus Syracuse. Be a joy to watch him play tonight. Wind could be a factor tonight. 16 mile an hour winds gusting to 21. There is some rain in the forecast. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. But going into that south end zone tonight could be a bear. Wake Forest is win the toss they elected to defer to the second half they're gonna have the wind to their back to kick off Mike Weaver doing the honors and Naheem Hines the very dangerous return man is back for NC State in the white uniforms went right through his hands but they're gonna start at the 25 Ryan Finley the starting quarterback for the pack he's 6'4 210 pounds the junior out of Phoenix 15 touchdown passes, four interceptions on the year, one rushing touchdown. He has put on 15 pounds this season, 15 pounds of good weight. Some people can do that. <laughs> he, is, he is one of those people. Number 19 in the college football playoff rankings this week. And they've got the fifth ranked offense in the ACC. Cole Cook, the tight end, goes in motion. First play from scrimmage is a running play to Naeem Himes. Himes is the leading rusher, but the guy to keep an eye on is number one, Jalen Samuels. Yeah, Jalen Samuels is going to line up all over the field tonight, whether it's tight end, running back, wide receiver. He's the guy they're trying to get the ball to. He's in the slot to the right, but they pitch it to Himes again. And takes it across the 30-yard line, roughed up by Cameron Glenn out of bounds. Third down coming up. Finley needs a big game tonight here, Kirk. Four touchdowns, four interceptions in his last three games. He hasn't been really sharp. Yeah, it's getting off to a fast start. You mean for him to start getting the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker. Last week, definitely out of rhythm versus Boston College. Getting the ball out quickly, how he's going to start this game. Third down and four for Finley. Fires it out, receiver screen. Samuels has that first down. He is their leading receiver. And a very effective runner. We're going to see him, as you mentioned, in, in both aspects of the game. you got to get the ball to him early and often. You get the ball in his hand, just let him be a playmaker. Mr. Samuels, a lot of moves on him. When he gets the ball in the open field, he's hard to bring down. Just tied a school record, 39 straight with a catch. First down, Finley. Cox fires. It's complete to Harmon. Kelvin Harmon having a great sophomore season. He is going to pick up nine on first down. I love what they're doing right now with Finley. They talked about last week being out of sync, out of rhythm early on versus Boston College. So far, some nice, quick, easy throws, a couple flares, a couple quick screens. That was a simple little in route, a nice completion, getting him off to a nice, fast start. Call it second down and two. Hines shifts in behind Finley. They put it in his bread basket. And he finds a big running lane and gets into plus territory. Finally pushed out at the 45 yard line by Grant Dawson. Yeah, watch the block right here by the left tack, left guard. Adams, Tony Adams creates a nice little crease. And that's all you need for Hines. Just a little bit of room. Allow him to get through that line of scrimmage and make a play. Wow. 
Welcome everybody to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, alongside Kirk Morris and I'm Clay Mathic. We've got a good one for you in the ACC. North Carolina State and Wake Forest. Both teams coming off wins. This is a rivalry game. Both teams still have a lot to play for in the season. This is NC State's opening drive, second down and 11. And already into Wake territory. Ryan Finley, the starting quarterback, will throw over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well covered by the linebacker, Grant Doss. Well, Clemson won the ACC Atlantic, Kirk. This game could decide who finishes second. In fact, if NC State wins it tonight, they will secure that. Wake is bowl eligible for the second straight year. And the Wolfpack are on pace to reach seven league wins for the first time in team history. Yeah, these are still two in-state rivals. Let's remember that. They not too far away from each other. They want to keep those bragging rights within the state of North Carolina. Here's your third down and 11. Archie Gillespie in the backfield with Finlay. Stepping up in the pocket in trouble. Finds some room and takes a punishing hit at the 37 yard line. Short of the first down line to gain. Jabari Williams, the outside linebacker, throwing his weight around. Really nothing there for Finley. He's looking down. This is what you call a coverage sack. Great coverage in the back end. The pressure gets to him. Finley takes off. And, but you got to finish, and this is what Wake Forest does defensively. Dave Doran doesn't trust his field goal kicking, especially going into the wind here in the south end zone. So they're going to go for it here on fourth down and two. Field goal kicking has been a mess this year for the Wolfpack. Finley rushed, and it's incomplete. The clock was ticking on Ryan Finley as Demetrius Kemp had the pressure, and Wake Forest will take over on downs. Yeah, no one accounts for Demetrius Kemp. He comes through free, untouched. He made Finley have to rush it, and that was just a bad throw. Just Finley, no one picked him up. It was a late, late blitz. Reggie Gillespie, the running back, number 25, Saw him late, but by that time he was already in the face of Finley. A nice fourth down stop for Wake Forest. Wake Forest has a terrific defense under first year coordinator Jay Savell. It's a very disruptive group. And they give it to the offense now. Matt Colburn with his first carry of the night, first of many, we suspect. He had 31 last week against Syracuse in what was a record-setting day. 734 yards for the offense. John Wolford, the quarterback, accounted for six total touchdowns. And the senior, an RPO master, the play fake, drops it right into Tabari Hines. Big play for the Demon Deacons. And they're in NC State territory. Yeah, you need time to throw. And Mr. RPO, like I said earlier, Waits allows the route to develop, catches Hines, drag it all the way across the field. A nice pass already, Mr. Walker. Gain of 39. Wolford hit, got rid of it, caught at the 13 by Hines again. Hines coming off a career high nine catches for 124 yards last week against Syracuse. He has really raised his game since Greg Dorch got hurt. They run it this time. It's Colburn again. He's got the first down. And if you're awake, this is how you want to start the game. A big play early on. Then you're right back onto the line of scrimmage. And you're watching John Walford as he orchestrates this offense. Already back on the line. Handoff again to Colburn. Find some running room and he's going to find the end zone. Touchdown Wake. Well, we wondered what they would do for an encore. We're getting an idea right now as it's an impressive opening drive. Nah, it's an impressive opening drive, but who'd they go away from? They went away from Bradley Chubb, the defensive end. They went to the left and just blocked man-on-man -man blocking. And Colburn just finds an opening, gets through for the touchdown for Wake. Mike Weaver comes on for the extra point for the Demon Deacons. Five plays, 64 yards in just over a minute and a half. 
Well, the win tonight, if they can get it, would match last year's total for Wake Forest. This is a program feeling really good right now. Colburn takes it in, and Wake leaves. Welcome back to Winston-Salem. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Clay Matthew, Kirk Morrison, our crew. A comfortable night here, with the exception of that win. Wake Forest, a good start, leading 7-0. A five-play, 64-yard drive in a minute, 32. After NC State turned it over on downs after nine plays on its opening series. Only a handful of games in the entire country today between teams with winning records. This is one of them. Wake out to a good start. Go back to the touchdown. It's the game within the game. Bradley Chubb versus John Walford. These two guys are going to play a game the entire. Freeze it right there. Watch the eyes of the quarterback. He's looking right here at Bradley Chubb. So what happened? Chubb has to freeze. And when he freezes, he's now out of the run game. And that's where Colbrin cuts it back, runs in for a touchdown. That's going to be the game right there, the game within the game. Walford versus Chubb tonight. A potential top 10 pick in Chubb. He's got his work cut out for him tonight. Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator for Wake Forest. He's done a great job with that unit. Pays to be the highest scoring team in Wake Forest history. Naheem Hines cut down just shy of the 30 yard line. He's going to get four. Demetrius Kemp with great closing speed. He has been active here in the first quarter. Early on, it's, it's, this game is going to be one in the trenches. That's on both sides. If you're North Carolina State, you want NC State, you want to rely on this offensive line. Try to get some push. You feel like you're the more dominant team. Up front. Cole Cook, the tight end, bouncing around in motion. Showing blitz. And then Hines off the handoff. Rips through a hole and gets a first down. Rusher for NC State. Hit a 50-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter last week at Boston College. This is the fifth-ranked offense in the ACC. But the question for Eli Drinkwitz, when we talked to the offensive coordinator this week, could they find a rhythm early on? They didn't do that at BC last week and really haven't in recent weeks. On first and ten, deep pass, Harmon incomplete. Jasir Taylor, the rookie cornerback who you know NC State is going to want to test tonight, passes his early test. Yeah, the normal starter there is Amari Henderson. But this is a true freshman, number 24. Jasir Taylor watches the, the way that he plays his football. He doesn't panic. He waits in there. Right arm around the hip, the, the hip, left arm knocking the ball down. That's great technique by a true freshman at corner. Taylor had a tough week last week. He went over Syracuse. They picked on him in the first half. Naeem Hines stopped at the 40. Give him about three. Oh, I love effort plays. This is a lot of effort right now. You're seeing by this Wake Forest defense, they're flying to the football. And there's Dawson in his 47th career game tonight, the former walk-on. Yeah, it's, it's Dawson, it's Kemp. These linebackers very active for Wake Forest. Third down and seven. Gillespie in the backfield with Finley. Kobe Myers goes in motion. Finley. From a clean pocket is complete to the 49 yard line. That's a first down for NC State. Caught by Myers. We'll move the chains. You want to keep those chains moving. This is what happened on the last series. The drive stalled. You want to continue to keep Finley in rhythm. So far, the out route has been working for him. Continue to keep going at these corners of Wake Forest. Jalen Samuels, number one, He'll swing back behind Finley. He's got it in the flat, but Finley's going to go deep down the field, and he's got a man in Harmon. Harmon finally swung out of bounds near the 20-yard line. A big pickup for the Wolfpack. It's a gain of 31. That's the guy you're trying to get the ball to, but all the attention was on who? 
It was on Jalen Samuels. And that's how Harmon's able to streak behind the defense because of Samuels' motion. And everybody paid attention to him, forgot about Harmon. Harmon second in the league in receiving yards. And this is Gillespie on the carry, the Wolfpack's number two rusher. Dawson again in on the tackle, give him three yards that time. Second down and seven. You get down here into the red zone, we're going to see a lot more direct runs, I feel like. Really try to go at the teeth of this Wake Forest defense. Force them, I think, to have to guard the middle of the field. They didn't do that enough last week, I thought, at Boston College. NC State doing something different, I think, this week. Hines. Hit at the 15 and driven down. Short gain. He's saying Bassey, the cornerback, with the stop. This is a defense for Wake Forest that's a, a little short-handed here tonight. Defensive end Duke Edge of four out with an ankle injury. Starting strong safety Jesse Bates will likely get some time tonight. He is number three and out on the field right now. He's going to be down there. Critical situations for Wake Forest. Even though he's still recovering from that sore knee. Ninth play of the series. Third down handoff. Hines is going to be short. So now another decision here for Dave Dorn, who, like we said before, doesn't really trust his field goal kicking unit. What does he do? He, you're on the road. You're going for it. <laughs> that's, that's an easy decision. You're coming here to win this football game. You're not being passive. You're being aggressive. With that last run, it sets you up with a fourth and short. This is where your offensive line takes over. You want to hand it off one more time. Pick this thing up, run in the football. And we're stopped on downs on their first series. Finley, deep handoff, Samuels. Touchdown, Jalen Samuels. They go for it on fourth down, and Samuels delivers for his head coach with his 26th career it, rushing touchdown. It's the old switcheroo. It's Samuels at tailback, and Hines was the running back in motion. And all he does is just be patient. Like I said, allow that offensive line to go out there, get on their blocks. Samuels pretty much walks in for a touchdown. Here's Kyle Bambard, their place kicker, who's been snake bitten the last few years. Missed three field goals last week at BC. His extra point is good. And it's a 10 play, 75 yard drive for NC State as they get the equalizer here. ESPN College Football is presented by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave, and in part by Degree Deodorant. It won't let you down. Some greats in the NC State past, including Mario Williams. He was the career sacks and tackles for loss leader at NC State until last week when Bradley Chubb passed him. He wears number nine like Williams did when he was at NC State. And he wears a special patch on that uniform paying tribute to Williams. One of my former teammates in the National Football League with the Buffalo Bills, Mario Williams, an outstanding athlete. Just say, I used to call him a freak of nature. A guy that big, that strong, that fast. If Chubb is anything like that, he's going to have a terrific career once he's get done here, here at NC State. NFL scouts think just like you. Good return to the 34-yard line for Chuck Wade. Let's say hi for the first time, Chris Cotter. Hello, Clay Kirk, AT&T Field Pass. Let's go out to Austin for this one. Justin Herbert, been out since September with an injury back and doesn't seem to have affected his wheels. Career-high 40-yard jaunt for Herbert. 14-7 right now, Oregon on top after one. All right, Chris, thank you very much. And we'll see what uh, Khalil Tate can do tonight, the quarterback for Arizona. <laughs> He's a special one.
Wake Forest wasted no time getting on the scoreboard. Five play touchdown drive on its first possession. Colburn on the carry, nothing doing, maybe a yard. Kick off your week 11 with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. It's the fifth anniversary of the butt fumble. And the crew will count down the biggest blunders in NFL history. Plus Randy Moss and you got Moss. I'm sure they'll have an update on the Jerry Jones, Roger Goodell feud as well. Second down and nine. John Wolford stays clean in the pocket. Is incomplete intended for the big man, Scotty Washington. It'll be third and nine. Bradley Chubb. Let pipe cinch to be one of the early picks in next year's draft. You're walking down on the field right before a game, pregame, he, he is a big man, I'll tell you that. They go back to Washington. They're going to move the chains. Washington is 6'5", 225 pounds. Yeah. Here's Chubb just coming off the outside. He shows the speed that he can get to the quarterback, but Walford feels him, steps up just a little bit, completes it to Washington. Wolford wants to throw again. About 30 yards downfield, but he can't connect with Hines. John Wolford, his interceptions have dropped. 35 INTs his last three years to 30 touchdowns. This year, 20 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Well, you ask him, it's because of his offensive line. They've just gotten better and better each year. That's given him time to be comfortable in the pocket. He is again here. It's going to be close to a first down for Cam Serenay. That's his first touch. The ACC receiver of the week. He had three touchdown catches against the Orange at the Carrier Dome last week. To me, once you cross the 50-yard line, Serenay is the guy who really comes to life, especially down in the red zone. Been a big target for Walford. On third and short, it's Colburn. First down yardage. Stiff arm pushing a tackler inside the 35 he just took Jonathan Alston five yards back with a great stiff arm and gains 14. I love when running backs finish runs that's a physical run that's setting a tone for the game that let me know you better bring it if you decide to tackle me tonight draw Wolford be hit at the line of scrimmage and dumped think about Wolford too is he's got pretty good speed, but not fast enough to get out of the arms of Chubb. No. Number nine in the white tonight, NC State, Bradley Chubb. Just showing you some of the athletic ability that he possesses. Getting Walford down. There's an RPO. Complete again to Washington. I don't think there are too many receivers in the country that are bigger than Scotty Washington. I really feel like Scotty Washington over the last couple weeks because of Greg Dorch's injury being out that he's really stepped up his game showing using that big body of his 6'5", 225, shielding a defender, making a catch there. He had a big week last week too, and here's another touchdown. It's Tabari Hines. Boy, this offense is a well-oiled machine right now. Wolford already over 100 yards passing. And just set a new school record for total points in a season. Weaver makes it 14 to 7. John Wolford hits Tabari Hines for the go-ahead score here in Winston-Salem. Two thirty-five to go here in the opening quarter. We've already had three touchdowns. Wake Forest regains the lead. John Wolford over a hundred yards passing already. This offense has been firing on all cylinders. 734 yards last week at the Carrier Dome. They've scored on their first two possessions here tonight, and now a new school record. 
And the way it looks, Kirk, you're going to add to this tally maybe quite a few times before it's all over tonight. Wake Forest, the offensive machine. 365 points on the season. NC State again will go to work at the 25-yard line. First of all, John Alford's a good job of locating the matchup here. Right there, that is Chris Ingram. He's a true freshman. Usually it's Sean Boone in there, but he has now moved to safety. So they go after the true freshman. It's a nice little route up and in by Tabari. Hines turns Ingram around. If you turn a, a defensive back around like that, it's easy pitch and catch for Walford. That's a good job by Walford, just seeing it, letting the route develop. No safety in the middle. I'll tell you, any quarterback's going to take that throw. Yeah, Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator for NC State, wanted to shake things up in the secondary, so he moved Sean Boone back to free safety. And that leaves a, a true freshman at nickelback, as you see Samuels make that catch for a gain of seven. But pretty good scouting so far early on by Wake Forest to go after the rookie. Yeah, but if you keep a safety out of the middle of the field, I'm going to have my routes go through the middle. And that's one thing that you're starting to see with the fast pace of Wake. A lot of guys on that defense for NC State looking around. The communication has to be there against this offense. On second and three, it's Gillespie, penalty flag down. First of the game. Gain of three yards, we'll see if it's coming back. Personal foul, top block, offense, number 70 and 65. 15-yard penalty, second down. Tyrone Prescott is number 70, 65 is Garrett Bradbury. You got this guy right here, center guard. When one is engaged high, the other guy cannot go low. It's a good job by the officials seeing that. It's a good job by Avante Bateman getting over the top of that, but that is a penalty. One guy engaged high, you can't go low. All in all, the NC State offensive line has done a great job this year. Only 11 sacks allowed, 12 fewest in the country. They opened up 221 yards of rushing last week at Boston College. On the screen, Hines, first down yardage, but we got penalty flags again. I think you may get an illegal chop block again on the outside. Holding, offense, number three. Holding pass and distance to the goal line, second down. Kelvin Harmon. Yeah, Kelvin Harmon's right here, and he just hold on a little bit too long. That's Amari Henderson coming up, and Stand on the outside. They're going to call that every single time, especially where the action is. And there's another play to Samuels already. They're trying to get the ball in his hands quickly, but another safe throw for Finley. Nothing down the field except the one earlier to Harmon. Nice safe throws to keep him in rhythm. Six for nine throwing the football, 62 yards. He'll throw here from the end zone. Down the middle. Incomplete contact. The NC State faithful who are here want a flag, and they get it. Grant Dawson is going to be called for the pass interference, it would appear. Defense, number 50, 15-yard penalty, first down. The defensive coordinator, Jay Sawbell, told us a little bit that he's trying to make sure that no one can find some of the weaknesses of the defense. This right here is a weakness when a linebacker is covering Naeem Hines you go I, I see that matchup if I'm Finley I'm going right there because it's an inexperienced linebacker running with a speedy running back see there at the end he just panics and got the penalty first down from the 24 yard line Jalen Samuels gave a handful Amari Henderson brings him down And we're under a minute to go here in the opening quarter. A little too much east and west so far. I think the most success I've seen NC State is running right at this defense. Just handing it off, going off tackles, staying in between the tackles in the run game. I think that's where their hay can be made today if they do that. Keep throwing it to the outside. Wait so far, taking great angles and making tackles. They went 75 yards on their last series in 10 plays. 
get on the board for the first time tonight. Here they face a second down and nine. A slant route. It's tipped in the air and incomplete. Isang Bassi, the sophomore cornerback out of Columbus, Georgia, did a great job in the secondary. Oh, he did an excellent job. And Finley, he's definitely happy that that ball was knocked away because that could have been an interception. Bassi, he read it. He saw it. A half a second earlier, he intercepts that and takes that back for six. NC State has converted twice on third down tonight. Third and long. They need the 34 to keep the drive alive. Finley dumps it off. Gillespie. Dropped by Williams. And the Wolfpack are going to have to punt into the win. If I'm Jabari Williams, I'm jumping up and down. I'm excited about that one. I'm letting everybody know he plays the buck linebacker, but you bring the running back down in the open field. That's something to jump up and down and celebrate about. Get off the field as well. One quarter in the books here in Winston-Salem. It's been entertaining. Wake Forest got a touchdown run from Colburn. Samuels ties it up. And Hines with the go-ahead score. It's 14-7 Wake. NC State offensive coordinator Eli Drinkwitz watching his team have to punt for the first time here tonight. You saw him shaking his head during the break. Bates on the return. On to the 35. Let's go under the helmet with Kirk and Wake quarterback John Wolfer. Go hang out with one person right now, dead or alive. Who would that one person be? Ooh. I'd love to pick like uh, Tom Brady's brain. Wow. Okay. So I'd like to hang out with him like be able to ask him more questions. That'd be that'd be cool. There's no doubt he's got yeah. smarts like Tom Brady. Yeah, oh, he mentioned Drew Brees right after that as well. So he, he, if he wants to pick a brain, those are two good quarterbacks that you definitely want to pick their brains. He's led two scoring drives. He'll keep it here on the RPO. And Wolford will gain a yard. That defense in front of NC State, which has four seniors, drives him back at Street and Jones on the tackle. The one thing about Wolford to me is that here's a guy that puts the time in. Four-year senior, understands the offense. He puts the time in. When he goes out and performs, it's because he understands this offense. He really gets it. Targets Washington again. They're complete. I mean, he's, he's had to battle for his job each year. It's the, you come in and start as a true freshman, but you're battling as a sophomore or junior. Still had to win the job this year as a senior. He's still playing at a high level. They convert on third down and two with the handoff to Matt Colbert. You get to the 48 of NC State. Going with tempo as Wake Forest wants to do. Wolford will throw it deep. Has a man out in front of the coverage, but throws it too far to Tabari Hines. Now, Wolford in his Wake offense going into the win for the first time here tonight. It appeared maybe Wolford misjudged, you know, the strength of that win. He overthrew it there. Yeah, overthrew him, but they go right back to the matchup again. It's Ingram, the nickel, true freshman, and Hines again. I think that's the matchup that Wake wants to exploit tonight. Colburn on second and ten, not this time. No running room. In fact, he's dropped for a loss. That's going to be tackle for loss by Justin Jones. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to scores, news, highlights all season, including throughout bowl season. Both of these teams are bowl secure this year. Ball start. Offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, third down. Left tackle, Justin Haran. Dave Clawson, fourth-year head coach for Wake Forest. This program has turned a corner under his leadership, especially the last two years. Yeah, it's what he envisioned when he came here four years ago. This is the Wake team that he wanted. They're blossoming, I think, earlier than he expected. His offense is facing a third and very long. 
Well, three for three on third down. Wolford sets in the pocket, throws down the middle, incomplete, again overthrown. He went to his go-to guy, Cam Serenoy. Tight end, but they don't connect. Well, you know the time clock in his head is going off. He knows number nine is going to be somewhere bearing down on him, Bradley Chubb. So he's got to get rid of that football. I think he let it go a little bit earlier. It's a good job by NC State getting off the field on third down. So now Don Maggio, their sophomore out of Maryland, comes on to punt for the first time. Again, into a stiff wind. Naeem Hines calling for the fair catch at the 16-yard line. And Ryan Finley will bring the pack offense back out when we come back. NC State trying to find the same rhythm they had on this drive. It's our drive recap presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. This was 10 plays, 75 yards. And Samuels with the capper from 11 yards out. But a couple of other series for the Wolfpack haven't turned out so well. They turned it over on downs, and then they were forced to punt or complete here. They've got the wind at their back. And that's Jacoby Myers on the catch. Now you're starting to see this team in rhythm. Those are the type of passes that get this offense going because now you connect with Myers. That's another guy that you have to look. You got to guard him, but also still find where Samuels and Hines is at every single play. We're starting field position for NC State, but get a big chunk here. 18 yards. First down out at the 34 yard line. Reggie Gillespie on the carry. Nice move. Puts his foot in the ground and. Runs up the scene. Cameron Glenn will wrap him up and bring him down. Reggie Gillespie, a quality backup to Naeem Hines. Ran behind 1,200-yard rusher Matt Days last year. Let's count on him. Yeah, 5'11", 225. A nice little changeup to Hines. A, a different type of back, you know. Hines more of a scatter guy can get around. Gillespie more of the bigger back. Gets the tough yards. Second and seven. This is Hines. He's going to stop short of the 40, so it'll be third and medium coming up. As Carlos Basham, that shirt freshman defensive end, who's going to be counted on more tonight because of Duke Edgefor being out with that ankle injury. There's Basham. That was one of my concerns coming in for Wake Forest with Edgefor out. How would this defense for Wake Forest create pressure, especially here on a third and medium? See what Coach Salvell dials up. Finley looks right, and he's complete for a first down. Go-to guy, Kelvin Harmon. That time Wake only rushes four, kind of played a little soft zone. Harmon, a nice little out route. Easy throw, nice catch, keeps the chains moving. First down. Fourth catch for Harmon. He's got 47 yards. He checks to a run, and it's Hines. We'll get about four on first down. Monday night football this week. Falcon Seahawks, Matt Ryan. Five and four Atlanta against former NC State quarterback Russell Wilson and the six and three Seattle Seahawks at the link. Monday night countdown kicks off the coverage at six Eastern on ESPN. Seahawks will be playing their first game without Richard Sherman. And now Cam Chancellor possibly out for the year as well. Depleted defense for Seattle. Ryan Finley. Dives ahead across midfield to the 45 yard line. Very close to the line to gain. Finley, not a great runner, but he's savvy at it. And it's going to be third and very short. They've had some really smart quarterbacks here over the years, some very talented quarterbacks. Over the years, Finley, a graduate transfer from Boise State, will go under center, and he'll keep it for the first down. Finley, 
had three years of eligibility remaining when he came to NC State. This is year number two. Yeah, he's already graduated. So here he's really, to me, really just getting and learning this offense. Last year, first year within it, and then now his, in his second year, they got some pieces around him making him a whole lot better, but he's a little bit hobbled after that last run. You see he's got that knee brace on the left knee. I don't know if that's the issue after that quarterback sneak or not. Naeem Himes finds room on the right side, gets it inside the 40, but there's a penalty marker at the 43. Gain of seven for Hines. Personal foul, chop block. But it's coming Offense, back. Number 70 and 65. First down. That's the second time Prescott and Bradbury have been called for the chop block. Yeah, see, the thing is, when you have this zone stretch scheme, the thing is, the two, those guys that get down, and you just get, you, you have to cut them down. So the backside, you're trying to not only take the legs out, but it's a hard block to make. That's why you see a lot of teams that try to cut that ball back because you're banking on getting those guys on the ground. That time the officials deemed that to be a chop block. That's the second time, like you mentioned, we've seen it. Well, there's Dwayne Ledford, Broyles Award candidate. He's the O-line coach and a very good one. They've got a band of brothers, as they call it. That O-line is a very tight group under his leadership, but I can't imagine he's happy right now. No, he's not happy because I, I hated those blocks as a player. You know, you get the play going front side and you got an offensive lineman diving at your legs. It's a good job by the officials keeping an eye on that. It's, I think it's, that's a point of emphasis for this game. That's what creates a lot of lanes in the run game. Zero. Reset the clock to 8.30. Put three seconds back on. So NC State is backed up to their own 41-yard line. First down and 25 for the Wolfpack. Finley has time to throw, comes to the near sideline, and a man wide open at the 39 to get a huge chunk back. That's a Mecca Amizi, the true freshman from North Carolina. And we expected he might get more work tonight because the Wolfpack's number three receiver, Steph Lewis, is dinged up with an ankle injury. Yeah, and if you want the ball thrown to you a little bit more, you run routes like that. Amizi pushing all the way up, breaking out, but it was a nice delivery from Finley for a first down, or close to a first down. Yeah, they got 20 on that, second and five. This is Naeem Hines again. Get a couple. But I think you always got to remember that once they cross the 50, it's four down territory for NC State. So the play calling is going to be you'll see more runs on second and third down because they're going to go for it on fourth down. That, that's the decision I think that they've made for this game to keep it short distances on third and fourth. And even with the wind at their back, I don't think they trust that field goal unit enough to run them out there too many times tonight. Tenth play of the series. Third and three. Finley Cox fires. Complete first down to the 28-yard line. There's Myers again, and they'll keep the drive alive. And Myers gets up and has some words with Kemp, who yeah. brought him down. <laughs> He's going after Kemp. And remember, Kemp is with the rover back. He's more of a run stopper. Not really has defensive back type skills. And that's Finley locating a matchup, getting the ball out there for Myers on what you would call Kemp a more of a linebacker, not a safety type. Play action pass, Finley to this sideline. Harmon, the receiver, and he steps out just inside the one. First down, goal to go, NC State. Oh, I love double moves. Watch the double move by Kelvin Harmon. Stutters the feet, just gets enough separation but look at the ball placement by Finley right over the shoulder. Terrific throw. Great catch inside the five for NC State. The run. Touchdown. Reggie Gillespie. Pounds it in. And NC State with a good response. Here to start the second quarter. No, oh, you called it. Not, not just a response. It was 
to me, that was the drive they needed. That was a statement drive. They executed all the way down the field. And remember the penalty that brought them back. They got the, the first down and then more. They got the touchdown. Terrific job by NC State coming back, making the plays for a touchdown. Bambard's extra point is right between the eyes. Ryan Finley, just four incompletions. He's got 143 yards passing. Set it up with Harmon and then the run by Gillespie. ESPN, home of the New Year's Six and the college football playoff. These head coaches both had success in the MAC prior to joining the ACC. Dave Doran at NIU and Dave Clausen at Bowling Green. Just the one meeting, and it was all Northern Illinois. Chandler Harnish, Jordan Lynch, the two quarterbacks leading the way for the Huskies. So that was Dave Bowl one. This is Dave <laughs> Bowl two. And this one promises to be tighter than that first matchup. Well, I'll tell you this, we're already with that score of 14 14. This is an interstate, intrastate rivalry, like we talked about earlier. Two teams fighting for something bigger than where they're at right now. You know, NC State trying to get to seven wins in the ACC. Got a couple games to do it. And they're chasing their first 10 win season since 2002 when Phillip Rivers was a junior. And Wake could get to nine wins. They went out, including the bowl game, which would tie the second highest win total in program history. So a lot on the line for these two intrastate rivals. <laughs> Wake Forest, which has a dangerous offense right now, set to get it back. They'll start it to 25. Tuesday on ESPN, exclusive coverage of the college football playoff top 25 rankings at 7 Eastern will have the reveal for you Reese Davis and the guys will talk to committee chairman Kirby Hokut as well that night you can see that Miami and Clemson will meet in the ACC championship game December 2nd in Charlotte Clemson has won the championship the last two years Miami still has a game at Pitt next week you, you wonder how that's gonna go for Miami after they had a tough battle today to get past Virginia always scare those post Thanksgiving games those are the ones that scare me as a coach got to get those guys focused you mentioned big game in Pittsburgh Arkeem Bird the running back they fake it to him and pass downfield to Hines nice move to avoid a tackle and then slides down at the 40 yard line John Wolford really took a shot and he's shaking out that right arm yeah he's shaking up but I'm telling you he felt the pressure he felt it coming and you know who it was it was the guy number nine Chubb bearing down delivers a shot but standing in there is Walford delivering a strike it's his throwing hand we have to keep an eye on that as our Bird gets his first touch and it's a good one rips off a first down run Gain of 13. Here's Chubb bearing down and looks to be his finger on the helmet of Chubb at the end. The follow through of the quarterback. I think he's feeling it right now on those fingers. Hand off to Bird. Just shy of the 20. Bird out the last couple of weeks going through concussion protocol. He took a hit against Louisville. Wake Forest is very happy to have him back, especially since their starting running back, Cade Carney, has been dinged up with a knee injury. We haven't seen him in recent weeks, so it's been a lot of Matt Colburn and John Wolford in the Wake running game. Nowhere for Bird to go this time. It'll be third down and about three. Yeah, you mentioned it was Colburn and also the quarterback Walford in a running game. The last week Colburn carried it 31 times. I think that's why Bird coming back is going to keep that running back group fresh as this game goes along. Play fake on third and two. Walford screen. Caught by Alex Bachman. That's his first touch. And that is going to be close to a first down. They may have to measure. 
They may have to measure, and I think they may be just about a length of a football short. Maybe a little bit more. It is short. The Wake offense is going to stay out there on fourth down. Bird in the backfield gets the carry. Bulls ahead, and he's got it. First down, Wake Forest. The red zone efficiency of Wake Kirk has been impressive. Number one in the ACC. They have scored in 40 of 43 trips coming into the night. Wolford to the four. Man, that's a guy I want to hitch my wagon to. <laughs> this guy's tough. The guy is tough. Well, I talked about it all week. It was a joy to watch John Walford on tape. He's fiery. He's competitive. Some of the traits that Coach Clawson wants from his quarterback. Now this time, NC State snuffs out Bird in the backfield. Guess who? Bradley Chubb combining with Justin Jones on an NC State tackle for loss. Second down and goal to go. Chubb it was announced this week a, a finalist for the Nagurski Award for the best defensive player in college football. This is the guy for me. He comes alive, the tight end down here inside the 10 yard line, Serenay. RPO, Serenay was the receiver Wolford looked for, but instead he checks to Hines. Touchdown! Second touchdown to Barry Hines. I call him RPO for a reason. It's take another look, see if he gets in. I think he does. I think that's a touchdown. Certainly from that look that he got to the pylon. Nine plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown. They're going to look at it upstairs, which they should. Close call. I understand. Take another look at it just to be sure, especially with the ball at the end. You see the ball kind of move. You've seen that throughout college football today. Extending the ball, Hines does right at the end. Watch how he extends the ball. I thought he had control as the tip just just the tip of the football has to touch that goal line right there. I think that's a touchdown. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which is a touchdown. It comes out at the end, but I believe he had control of that as well. And once again, he's beating the After freshman Ingram. Review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. First two touchdown game in the career of Tabari Hines, who was the go-to guy in the receiving core until Greg Dorch, the freshman, came on early on in the season, but he's out for the year. They're starting to go back to Hines in this offense, and he's delivering. And now Mike Weaver comes on for the extra point. He had an extra point blocked last week at Syracuse and returned for a two-point conversion. But he buries this one. And Dave Clawson's Demon Deacons are back up by a touchdown. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Polaris Razor. Fuel your freedom. And Axe, find your magic. The Demon Deacon riding his hog under the field here at BB and T Field in Winston Salem, North Carolina. 60 degrees of kick. There's been some wind. It's going to rain in the forecast, but we're having some fun here tonight. Each team over 200 yards of offense. Wake Forest goes back in front by a touchdown. 21 to 14 with 247 to go here in the first half. It's a pooch kick. Fielded at the 21 yard line by the Wolfpack. They're going to have decent field position to start this drive after 33. Wolford. There's consecutive games with two or more passing touchdowns. ACC quarterbacks this season see uh, he and Lamar Jackson yeah. each with five. Those and two guys. Of course, on the Jackson won the Heisman last year. Yeah, but those two guys on the bottom went at it today. Kirk Ben Kirk and 
William Brozier. That was a good that game. That was a good game, man. You talk about the quarterback play in the ACC this year. Definitely outstanding from, I think, top to bottom. You're starting to see a nice little group of quarterbacks. Miami beat Virginia today. Clemson pounded the Citadel. They scored over 60 points, which, of course, Wake Forest did last week. That pass is incomplete. Jalen Samuels couldn't haul it in. Wake Forest was ready to pounce on it in case it was ruled backwards pass, which it was not. Second down at 10. Yeah, and Wake, they substitute, they bring in their nickel package. Finley 12 of 17, 143 through the air. Hands off to Hines. Hines run to it. Runs into a lineman. And then Suleiman Kamara, the defensive tackle, number 90. Richard freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. With another Wake Forest tackle for loss. They've got two tonight. Yeah, just watch Suleiman here. He just go get the football. If you don't block me, I'm just going to go grab him. I go get him down. A good job by Suleiman not grabbing the back of the jersey. If he grabbed the back of that nameplate, that's a 15-yard penalty. Good job having awareness and bringing them down. Wake trying to get off the field here. Third down and 11. Finley, time to throw. Rips one off to Jacoby Myers, and he is right at the line. Needed the 42, lands down at the 42. We'll see where they spot it. He's got it. First down, NC State. Fantastic awareness there by Myers. He knew where he needed to get to. You mentioned it, Clay. He had to find the marker right where he was. That's where the ball was thrown. First down, NC State. Myers just a sophomore, but he's a heady player. Finley goes to the air again. He'll hook up with Harmon. He's having a great second year. Five 100-yard receiving games this season. Fifth most in team history. And NC State now is in two-minute mode. You see, picking up the tempo a little bit. You're starting to see Finley make some throws down the field. NC State has all of its timeouts to use as well as Harmon will move the chains into Wake Forest territory. They'll spot it at the 44 first down. I like this for him. I don't know why they don't do it enough as far as picking up the tempo, just allowing the defense to play vanilla. Not a lot of substituting, not a lot of shifting. Good job by Finley. Dave Dorn wants a timeout. All State is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All State has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Out of the timeout, NC State has it at the Wake Forest 44-yard line. They've got two timeouts remaining, under a minute to go until halftime. Finley has it batted down. Beautiful play by Amari Henderson who played through a sore foot last week at the Carrier Dome and helped shut down that Syracuse offense in the second half. This is a, a gritty sophomore from Charlotte. Yeah, that time he just sat on that route. Remember earlier, they ran the hitch and then go. So that time, Henderson did a, a terrific job of staying there, waiting for the route to declare, then breaking, breaking it up. The clock stops with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Finley. Complete. First time C.J. Riley has touched the football. He falls down at the 40-yard line and a timeout again called by the Wolfpack. They've got one remaining. 46 seconds to go to half. We'll step aside. Time running out here in the second quarter. NC State driving. There's the field goal kicker, Kyle Bambard. He's been a guy under the microscope the last couple of years. Missed three field goals last week, but also hit a 41-yarder before half, which was the difference in the game against Boston College. They're probably going to have to get inside the 30 to give him a shot. Third down and six. Finley overthrows Emeka Amizi. It'll be fourth down. 
He was wide open. Wide open. He just missed him. He just missed him. Back in the game, Jesse Bates, he's missed some time, 100% healthy. And Bates jumped the underneath route and just Finley trying to put it in that tight window just missed what would have been a big play. A.J. Cole on to punt for the second time. Wake Forest's offense is going to have some time on the clock and three timeouts. Bates is going to let this sail over his head and into the end zone. A look at the college football playoff rankings brought to us by Northwestern Mutual. You call it Cupcake Saturday. That's kind of <laughs> what it was. It was Cupcake yeah. for no most of the teams It was today. Cupcake Saturday for sure. But how about Wisconsin's win over Michigan? Yeah, in the elements. Wisconsin's a good football team. They're a very good football team. Looking forward to watching them in that Big Ten championship game. Badgers at Minnesota next week, then the Big Ten title game. And Wake Forest against the wind. Going to take an E, and they're going to be happy to go into the locker room with a seven-point lead. Chris Cotter, Chip Kelly, Jonathan Vilma coming up at the half. Baker Mayfield, he's probably the leader right now in the Heisman race. He was a little disrespectful in the game against Kansas today. They're going to be talking about that on our halftime coverage. And more about the Wisconsin Badgers' victory over Michigan, I'm sure. Dave Clawson and the Demon Deacons with a touchdown lead after 30 minutes going for win number seven tonight. All ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. Halftime, Connor, Kelly, Vilma. Here at uh, Winston-Salem, Tabari Hines getting to the pylon and scoring 21-14. Wake on top at home. Wake Forest. This halftime report is brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass. ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. NC State, Wake Forest, in-state rivals here in North Carolina. 21 to 14 at the half. Clay Matthew, Kirk Morrison with you. And we came in, Kirk, talking a lot about that veteran defense of NC State. Nine seniors, but I was really impressed with Wake's defense in that first half hour. Yeah, Wake Forest, they came here to prove a point. That I know the offense has been playing well for Wake over the last couple weeks, but it's a defense in the way that they've played. It's been running to the football, been making timely plays in the passing game, but it's been relentless. They have came here to prove a point. And both of these teams trying to improve their bowl resumes before the end of the season. Wake Forest led by their senior quarterback, John Wolford, maybe the hottest quarterback in the country other than Baker Mayfield. And as you look at her Taco Bell game track, he won the first half when it comes to head-to-head -to -head quarterback play. Yeah, he's been the better quarterback today. He's shown so many different ways that you can affect the game. It's not just him throwing the football. I just think that his command, how comfortable he is. And look, we got to give some credit to that offensive line, but opening up holes, but also giving Wolford enough time to go to his second and third progressions in the passing game. Wake Forest is going to get the football to start the second half. Demon Deacons are 4 and 1 this season when leading at the half. They're going to have their wind or the wind I should say will be at their back. Here in the third quarter, there's Dave Clawson, who has been a great fit here in Winston-Salem, New York native. Most of his family lives here in Charlotte. There are quite a few of his family in attendance tonight, including his parents. And inside the 15-yard line, Lockman brings it back. Just watching his first half for John Walford. 
it's what I call the RPO. It's run pass option. But watch the eyes of the quarterback. They never seem to go away from downfield. He keeps them downfield, makes throws in this last play. Just watch. I call this the RPO. RPO. Yeah, was because it's the, the run pass option. Serenade's open. But then he takes it away and throws it to the other open guy, which was Hines for a touchdown. Terrific job by John Walford in the first half running this offense. 734 yards of offense in the Carrier Dome last week. Wake held to a modest 220 in the first half here tonight, but they've got the lead. Modest by their standards in recent weeks. Matt Colburn, just seven carries in the first half compared to the 31 he had a week ago. Bradley Chubb, who hasn't had the impact yet tonight that I'm sure he had hoped for, he makes the tackle after a two-yard pickup. Wolford slings it to the near sideline, incomplete. Third down and long as Washington was the intended receiver. The free safety, Sean Boone, got a finger on it. They're going to hustle up to the line here. Pressure. Wolford steps up in the pocket. And will dive down to the 40-yard line, well short of the line to gain, which was the 44. And that is the start defensively that Dave Huxtable was looking for. The defensive coordinator of the Wolfpack as Street and Hill combined on the stop. Wake Forest punting unit comes out. NC State blocked a punt last week. They had good pressure on Don Maggio. Hines fields it on the hop. And he'll be swarmed under a host of black jerseys at the 23. It's a 46-yard punt for Maggio. Trying to come after it here. Almost blocks it. They get in. You can definitely see that the intensity has picked up for North Carolina State. Number 95, Tyrone Riley, who blocked that kick last week for NC State, nearly clipped that one. Definitely see a sense of urgency this second half. NC State, that, all, that sideline is starting to come alive a little bit, knowing they got to play with just a little bit more because Wake Forest definitely feeling confident. Two long scoring drives for the pack in the first half. Jalen Samuels trying to make an impact here early in the third quarter. Busts a run of 20 yards. Bassey finally tracks him down you ever heard the term making something out of nothing there's really nothing there but Jalen Samuels creates something he makes guys miss he gets into the open field He's just a tough guy to bring down you give him just a little bit of space and he can create they go back to their traditional running back Hines 14th carry for Hines Grant Dawson the middle linebacker makes the stop what a weapon to have when you got Jalen Samuels you can line up everywhere he'll take snaps in the Wildcat traditional running back in some sets a receiver in some he's off the field to, for their second down and eight but Eli Drinkwitz loves <laughs> All the options that he has at his disposable with Jalen Samuels. Incomplete. Should have been caught by Myers. Third and eight. That's a dangerous pass. Throwing all the way across the field. Because it takes so long for that ball to get there. He actually should have made that catch, Jacoby Myers. But it's too long for that pass to get there. He's saying Bassey. Right there in coverage. Dangerous pass. NC State 6 of 11 in the first half on third down. Finley out of the shotgun. Sets to throw, unleashes a pass, caught at the 42. First down, NC State. That is Jamichael Ramos. The senior out of Lovejoy, Georgia, with his first touch tonight. It all starts with the blocking up front. Finley able to step into that throw. The offensive line, they read the blitz, just giving him enough time to read the defense and deliver a strike for a first down. 
Finley will throw again. It's a screen to Myers. And Wake Forest was pretty much ready for it. Kemp leading the way. Ramos is a great story for NC State. Missed all of 2016 with a knee injury. He had surgery. He was used a lot in the offense a couple of years back and they struggled to get him involved in the offense and he's had a hard time rounding back into form but he made a big play to convert the well, first down one catch coming in he just made a catch right there so definitely finding ways to get him the football coming up big there Finley will keep it lunge across the 30 yard line down at the 29 It'll be third down and short. And this will be four down territory as it's been all evening long for Dave Doran. Yeah, but now they're almost to the red zone. When that ball starts to get inside the 40 and the 30, a different type of offense you got to call. For me, I think offensive quarter Eli Drinkwich, you continue to run the ball. It's running downhill straight ahead at this Wake Forest defense as they near the red zone. Penalty flag down. Finley on the hook. We'll get the first down yardage. And NC State probably is going to decline this. It looked like Wake Forest was offside. A penalty decline. Results in play. First down. Yeah, they get the offside. I believe it was one of these two guys right here. I just saw the. It was actually almost the whole entire defense kind of yeah. jumping off sides there. But this is what Finley does as well. He gets out of the pocket and he knows he's got a free play. He takes what he can get and gets out of bounds. That's a good job understanding that free play. Let me get what I can and save a hit on my body. Finley toward the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown. What a catch. It's Ramos again. No, it's Amizi. Check that. 86 Omeka Amizi with the catch. The only place he can go catch it. High point it. Back shoulder. Foot down. Touchdown. Wow. That's how you go up and get a football. Just need the one foot. He got it down. And the true freshman. With a big play for the NC State offense here on its first drive of the second half. And Kyle Bambard tacks on the extra point to tie the game. That's the drive Ryan Finley was looking for to start the third quarter. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. Clay Mathic, Kirk Morrison, our entire ESPN crew here in Winston-Salem. We're tied up again at 21. Third tie of the game. NC State has never led in this contest, but they just got a great touchdown grab from Emeka Amizi from that guy, Ryan Finley. Amizi, the first touchdown catch of his career, and it was sensation. Bachman on the return from the 10-yard line. Driven back as he got to the 27. And guess what? Amizi's fired up. He's going to get the stop on teams. Well, going back to the touchdown play, here's Isang Bassi, the corner. He's going to come on a blitz. Finley, he recognizes the blitz. And what does he do? He trusts the true freshman to go up and make a play. And that's what Emeka Amizi does. He goes up, high points the football, and brings it down. That is a quarterback seeing the blitz, but also having faith and trust and a true freshman to bring in his first career touchdown. That's, let's see what the captain, John Wolford, and this offensive Wake Forest can do Ball as start. a response. Ball I guess they're going to full start. First down. Scotty Washington, the receiver, and that's the third penalty on the Deacons. It's like the first bit of adversity in his game for Wake Forest. We'll see how they respond as this crowd is starting to pick up, but it's more of the people dressed in red for NC State. They're starting to get loud. Yeah, there's a lot of red here. Wolford draws the defense and then runs up the middle for a handful. 
B.J. Hill with the tackle, as you can see, the uh, Wolfpack faithful <laughs> yeah, they have made their presence felt here tonight at BB&T Field. One side of the stadium is more red than black and gold, that's for sure. Wolford brought down by Bryant. Third you know, down. Bradley Chubb gets a lot of the recognition, but it's the other guys. It's Kim Tavis Street, B.J. Hill, Justin Jones along that defensive front. That create a lot of pressure. Wolford stays clean, throw incomplete, and it was well underthrown, intended for Hines. Fourth down. NC State has the momentum now. They have turned that dial all the way up. You got to make sure you find number nine first. That's Bradley Chubb. You take care of him, but watch the stunt coming right off of it. It's Bryant, and Wolford felt that pressure, had to let it go early. Getting off the field again, other three and out for NC State. Naheem Hines has trouble. Loose football. It rolls into the end zone, and NC State covers it up. And that's going to be a touchback. Boy, NC State dodging a bullet there. That's the muff. It's ball carries into the end zone and was recovered in the end zone. That is considered a touchback. Now, had he caught it truly and then fumbled it backwards that would have been a safety but that was considered carrying into the end zone ESPN college football brought to you by Dr. Scholes and Sam Adams fill your glass Dave Klassen really wanted us to show these <laughs> artist renderings the construction of Wake Forest's new Sutton Sports Performance Center, which is underway. The four-level, 87,000-foot square-foot facility. Uh, it's going to be connected to the McCreary Fieldhouse on campus. It's going to be a beauty. The new Wake. That's what they call it. The new Wake. All these buildings coming up around here. Special place to play football now. NC State will have it at the 20 after Naeem Himes muffed that punt and it rolled into the end zone for the touchback. Angie Gillespie's in the backfield. Himes was shaken up after the play. It appeared he headed toward the locker room. We'll have to get an update on that. Here's that muffed punt. Never truly controlled it. And with the ball going into the end zone and being recovered by NC State, that is considered a touchback and not a safety. This is just moments ago, him leaving the field. Hines is their leading rusher. Dangerous return man, too. Had a 92-yard punt return earlier this season against Clemson. Jalen Samuels touching for the second time. Let's go to the studio for an update with Chris. Okay, guys, the misery continues for the Vols at home tonight against LSU. A couple of quick touchdowns for the Tigers, including this six-yard run from Darrell Williams, the second on the night. 30-10, to 10, Tigers on top on ESPN. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Butch is out. Brady Hoke is the interim at Tennessee. Of course, Ed Orgeron, he knows something about being an interim head coach <laughs> at LSU. Tigers playing hard, though. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. you Got to go play. LSU doing a good job. And Finley wants a timeout. As the play clock was winded down, it was inside of five. 8.04 remaining here in the third quarter. A third down and two coming up for NC State. They've been pretty good on third down tonight. Monday night football this week. It's a good one. Matt Ryan leading the 5 and 4 Falcons against Russell Wilson and the 6 and 3 Seahawks. Monday night countdown kicks off the coverage. 6 Eastern. No Richard Sherman, no Cam Chancellor for Seattle, and Devonta Freeman rolled out due to a concussion from last week. So some big stars out on Monday night. Out of the timeout on third and two, Gillespie makes the catch out of the backfield. He is going to be cut down well short of the first down line the game. 
Isang Bassey has made some big tackles tonight for the Wake Forest defense. It's a fourth down he's, coming up here for NC State. He's not afraid to come up and hit you. He's not. He comes up, he makes the play. This is a call it a turnover tackle. You know why? Because you get him down to the ground, you get the ball to your offense. That's a great job. First of all, going inside out, making the play by Bassey. First three and out for the Wolfpack tonight. That was off the side of the foot for the punter, A.J. Cole. And the Demon Deacons are going to have excellent field position at their own 49-yard line. And that's a 25-yard punt for A.J. Cole, the junior out of College Park, Georgia. Seven twenty-nine to go in the third quarter. Bradley Chubb ready to come back out with that defense for NC State. The Wake Forest defense with a big stop, three and out. And now the offense gets it back for Wake Forest with terrific field position at the 49 of the Demon Deacons. Our Keen Bird is in the backfield. And he gets the handoff, and it's going to be a loss. Justin Jones and B.J. Hill, the two seniors up front, combining on the stop. Dave Huxtable is going to miss B.J. Hill. He's going to miss all four of those guys. Street, Jones, those front yep. four with Chubb. Wolford. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That catch for Hines. Bradley Chubb making the stop. His brother Brandon was an All-American, I should say an All-ACC middle linebacker at Wake Forest. Now he's on the other side. Incomplete. Fourth down as this NC State defense is bowing its back. This game right now is being taken over by both defenses. It's Wake Forest defense and now NC State's defense taking over. Terrific job communicating. You get the ball right there around the 50-yard line. Wake doesn't take a shot down the field, but it's a three and out by the NC State, NC State defense getting off the field again. Naeem Hines hasn't returned from the locker room. He was shaken up on the last punt return that he muffed, and now Gavin Locklear is back for NC State, but it rolls out of bounds. Championship drive update brought to us by Dr. Pepper, Miami. They gutted one out against Virginia, coming back to win that 44 to 28. So they stay undefeated. Wisconsin beat Michigan. Jonathan Taylor with 132 yards rushing, and JMU defeating Elon in the FCS 17 to three on a 22-game winning streak. It's James Madison. JMU continuing to roll. After no three and outs in the first half, the last four possessions have been three and outs. So this game, like you said, Kirk, has been taken over by the defense. Play fake to Gillespie. Ryan Finley going deep down the field. Harmon can't track it down. Kelvin Harmon had six catches. For 88 yards in the first half. And Finley and the sophomore failed to click there. Finley just overshot him. Made a clean pocket. Great mechanics. Time to step up. Just missed him. I've been impressed with his arm talent. And that was against a pretty stiff win. Jalen Samuels. The all everything back is lined up behind Finley. Low snap. Finley dives on it. And it's going to be third down. We had a fairly clean game tonight. No turnovers. Very low, little penalties. But there's been two mistakes by NC State. It hasn't cost them. It was the muff punt, but they got the touchback there. That's just a mishandle of the snap. But now it puts you back again. Third and long. And this is where the Wake Forest defense has risen all night. Only eight turnovers this year for NC State. Second in the league behind Wake Forest to a seven. On third and 14, all kinds of time for Finley. Man open. Harmon can't haul it in. Oh, he's going to be kicking himself for that one. 
That would have been a first down with room to spare. And this is why you do not allow the ball to get into your body. You got to catch it with your hands. And see the ball, see, he, if he puts his hands out and catches that, that's easy. But it bounces off the shoulder pad. And watch when it bounces off the shoulder pad, the ricochet. You got to get your hands out in front and catch that. That's how you bring that ball in. Cole with a shank on his last punt, kicking from the goal line. This is better. This is going to sail to the 40 of Wake Forest where Bates feels it. 47-yard punt. What have you thought of Bradley Chubb tonight? Uh, it's been effort, all effort. Here's a guy that just runs to the football and makes plays. He's gotten there, got a couple hits on the quarterback early on. And I tell you, John Walford, he feels him coming. He feels him coming each and every single play. He just can't outrun him. He's determined. I mentioned the effort. You find a way to just get to the ball carrier. His motor never stops running. That's what I've seen tonight. I've been very impressed with Bradley Chubb. Four tackles tonight for number nine. He's been involved on a tackle for loss. Brings him to 24 on the season. Has not come off the field. He's been out there. That's the one thing. They try to pull him off the field. Chubb saying, no way. I'm staying. Wolford, he's going to take a shot on first down. Has a man wide open. What a catch by Chuck Wade, his old high school teammate. Lay out and get it, Chuck Wade. The old high school connection, like you said. How many times did they do that? Down there in Jacksonville, Florida. At Bishop Kenny High School. That's where they played high school ball. And Colburn is brought down for a loss on first down. Jermaine Pratt, the weak side linebacker, on the tackle. But we were talking about Finley's arm talent. Yeah. How about Wolford? This guy has been underrated all year, I think, in a lot of ways. He can fire it, too. It's the big play. They found it with Chuck Wade. Now they got to cash it in. Right up the middle with a pass for Wolford. And he's complete again. That's Serene, who's been relatively quiet tonight compared to last week at the Carrier Dome. He has a terrific job by NC State, recognizing where Serene is. They've had two eyes on him the whole night. Wolford again throwing. This time incomplete. Hines wanting a flag. Well covered by Chris Ingram. There's the true freshman Nickelback who they test again. They wanted a holding call. They're not going to get it. Yeah, they're not going to get that hold. That ball's just kind of a little bit overthrown. But that's the matchup. They've been to that matchup at least two or three times tonight. Mike Weaver is going to come on for a field goal attempt for Wake Forest to try and take the lead. He is 15 of 18 with a long of 43 this year. This is going to be a 36-yard attempt with the wind at his back. Out of the hold of the punter, Don Maggio. Boy, that would have been good from 60. Nice weapon to have in your back pocket. NC State secures second place in the ACC Atlantic with a win tonight, but Wake Forest goes back in front by three. Clemson won the Atlantic. They're going to face Miami in the ACC championship game December 2nd in Charlotte. Clemson has won the league title the last two years. Miami still has a game at Pitt next week. And, of course, they're trying to stay undefeated, trying to stay in that college football playoff picture. It looks good for both of these teams right now. But is that going to be a college football playoff elimination game in your mind, uh, specifically for Clemson? I think for Clemson, possibly. Uh, this is the question that I really have. It's if Miami stays or moves up to two. If Miami moves up to two next week after possibly a win over Pitt, do, if they lose that ACC championship game, how can you drop them from two to five? You know what I mean? So possibly you may have a chance of getting two ACC teams in. You can't drop a team, I think, from two all the way to five, especially an undefeated Miami team if they go in to the ACC championship. Miami stayed undefeated with a win today over Virginia. Didn't come easy. And nothing is coming easy for either of these teams tonight because the opponent seems to always respond. It's been <laughs> a back and forth affair here tonight. Wake goes back on top by three after the field goal by Weaver. 
from 36 yards. Trowell on the return. Hines has not come back out of the locker room. And he gets to the 36-yard line. With their win today, undefeated Miami's next game, the day after Thanksgiving, is against Pitt at noon. Then it's going to be a good one. UCF and South Florida, the undefeated Knights. 3.30 Eastern on ABC. That's the war on I-4. That's some group of six game right there. I mean, group, yep. well, group of five trying to get into the New Year's Six Bowl. UCF right now, the front runners. Jalen Samuels on the carry. The ball comes out. First turnover of the game. Wake's got it back. Harris Black with the recovery. And the guy who's been very active tonight from the linebacking core, Demetrius Kemp, popped it out. It was coming down to which team was going to flinch or make the mistake first. And it's NC State not holding on to the football. Samuels, who had a fumble last week, fumbles again this week. Maybe a costly one. Not holding on to it. Good job by Kemp attacking that football. And if I'm awake, I'm trying to take a shot at the end zone right now with the sudden change. Wolford close to 200 passing. You're right. He will take a shot. And who's got it? NC State takes it right back. Sean Boone with the interception. He pulled it right away from the receiver. And I don't have a problem with this. He's going up to grab that ball. That's just good defense there by Cameron Glenn. Fighting to the end. That's just a good job right there. Cameron Glenn at the end. Just pulling it down. Mike Stevens so got Steve. a hand on it. The Stevens, yeah. Sean Boone with the interception. Walford goes to the telephone. As these teams exchange turnovers in NC State. I, I don't mind that play, though. Gets a big play from the defense, though, to get it back. But it's being aggressive. Stevens was as, as aggressive in his coverage. Knocks the ball loose. And now Finley going to the air on first down. And that's another drop for Harmon. Again, letting the ball get into the body. And Harmon, this is the second time he's done that. You got to go up with the hands. You got to grab that football from the sky. Grab it out of the air. When you allow the football to come into the body, it can ricochet. That time, off the helmet earlier, we saw it off the shoulder pad. Play action pass. Finley is complete. There is Myers for the first down, a gain of 12 on the catch. These teams have been very good protecting the football throughout the year. Two of the best in the country. That was just the eighth turnover all year for Wake Forest. Only Alabama having fewer in the country coming into the night with five. Finley on the run. He'll get to the 32. And NC State's done a pretty good job not turning it over as well. Yeah, protecting the football all year. They only had eight coming in, four, intercept, four interceptions thrown, four fumbles. But that fumble by Samuels, you thought, hey, how, this will be deflating the NC State. They come back and get an interception of their own. Now you feel like the momentum is who's going to make the next play. That's what this game's coming down to. Who's going to make the last play, it seems, that. The last be in the backfield, but they're going to throw again. Receiver screen, it's Myers. Gets to the outside, lowers his shoulder. Steps across the 35. He's out at the 37-yard line. Masterson escorted him out. It's going to be third down and manageable here for the NC State Wolfpack. Down three with two and a half to go here in the third. You get down here, third down. 
I'm Wake Forest. I find where's Jalen Samuels? Where is he at? He's the guy that you want to get the ball to. Here's Samuels right here. Keep your eye on Samuels on third down. Looking that way. But it's C.J. Riley with the reception. And they will move the chains. First down, it's a gain of 12. Yeah, they double-teamed Samuels there. They had him covered. And Riley only having five passes coming into the game makes a huge catch to keep those chains moving for NC State. Finley. A couple of shoulder fakes. Contact in the secondary. No laundry on the field. It was pass intended for Myers. I get a sense that NC State has, you know, they know they got a break with the defense. And Sean Boone getting that interception, getting the ball back in the hands of the offense because that turnover could have been deflating. Yeah, it could have been deflating, but the offense is still picking up. Remember, Hines still in the locker room, so where are you going to find offense at outside of Samuels? So far, other receivers are making plays on his drive. Finley, a rope to the 30, 40-yard line, I should say. Harmon is driven back. And that time... Spotted at the 42. Sorry, partner. It, sorry. Think about it. He caught that with his hands. I got excited because we saw him two previous times earlier. He let the ball get into his body. It bounced off. And watch this catch. Grab it out of the air. Yep. It's easy. Grab it. Tuck it. Not allowing that ball to get into the body. Yeah, he hasn't uh, had a characteristically sharp night. Fake to Gillespie. Finley throws. Looking for Samuels. Tried to make a one-hand catch. And it's incomplete. And so now it's fourth down. And I suspect Dorn will go for it again. Yeah, he's going for it. Samuels almost bringing that in with one hand. Got to use two there, right? You Got to use two, but... I think when you have a guy who draped all the way on you, like Bassey was, kind of holding that left arm back. Good job by a veteran corner. Sophomore cornerback holding that arm, only really allowing one hand for Samuels to make the catch. NC State one for two on fourth down tonight. Jet sweep, Samuels cuts it up. He's got the first down and more. Nudged out of bounds by Masterson. And Samuels, yeah, flexing a little bit, saying, we needed that, and I got it for us. Yeah, I talked about it earlier, making something out of nothing. You hand him the ball in space, he just creates, makes two guys miss, and finishes the run. That's what you get excited about with Samuels. Just let him be the playmaker. Get him the ball. Go get us a first down. Good job, Samuels. He's the pack's leading receiver on the Bolitnikov watch list, but he's not a true wide receiver. They use him as a running back. They even line up as a quarterback sometimes. This is Myers. Get a couple on that screen play. Bassey, the open field tackle, and it might be the last play of quarter number three. Well, we knew this would probably be a good game between these longtime rivals. NC State on the march down three. It's going to be decided late. The 111th meeting between Wake and NC State going to the fourth. NC State is going to get the wind at its back now as we start the fourth quarter. The Wolfpack chasing its first 10 win season in 15 years. Wake Forest, if they win out, including the bowl game, could get to nine wins. They haven't had many of those in program history. Demon Deacons leading by three, 15 minutes to play. On second down and eight. First play of the quarter is to Reggie Gillespie. He is probably going to be the primary running back for the Wolfpack the rest of the way. 
Dave Dorn is going to be without Naeem Hines, or at least it is expected he will be doubtful to return. We have not seen him since he muffed that punt early in the third quarter. Yeah, so now you got to pick it up. Where do you find the offense? That's where we know where Samuels is, but it's going to be someone else outside of Jalen Samuels that has to make a big play. Trying to convert on third and five. Finley tucks. And he sneaks ahead inside the 20 yard line to the 19. Said it before. I mean, that's not his strong suit running the football, but a few times that he's done it here tonight, he's looked pretty good doing it. Yeah, he's more athletic than you think. You see him more of a statue type of quarterback in the pocket, but when he takes off, you look at him, eight rushes, 37 yards. When his team needs him, he steps up, makes the play. Another fresh set of downs for NC State. 13th play of the drive coming up here for NC State, their longest drive of the night. They had two long scoring drives in the first half. Pumping Finley to the end zone, incomplete. Throw is high. That's intended for Amizi, who had that terrific touchdown catch. His first of his young career here earlier tonight. Second down and 10. Six ACC wins would tie a program record. That's what NC State is looking for tonight. The last time they got to six conference wins was 1994. And they host North Carolina next week. They could get to seven. Before it's all said and done, Larry Fedora's team's down a little bit this year. They will hand off. And it is Gillespie. Zeke Rodney, the defensive tackle, able to corral him. Third down at about six, Kirk. What is Eli Drinkwood's going to draw up here? Well, he said he gets down into the red zone. They still want to run the football. They still want to go right downhill. More inside runs. So they get into a fourth down situation. They have a better opportunity with a fourth and short rather than a fourth and long. Yeah, they need touchdowns. Field goal attempts really aren't in the option cards for NC State. Finley is complete. Slipping out of a tackle is Harmon. Great second effort to get the first down. How about Kelvin Harmon, who hasn't had a great second half, a couple of drops earlier, with a huge conversion here for the pack. Yeah, but the awareness and the recognition. He knows where that first down marker is. Just relentless. He was not going to be denied. Tacklers bouncing off of him, extending that football. Good job by Harmon for the first down. First down, goal to go. Gillespie in the backfield. Samuels goes in motion. It is Gillespie. Finding some running room. Bangs his way inside the five. That was the 75th play of the night for NC State compared to Wake's 44. And you look at them on the ground, they had through three quarters, it was 137 yards that they had. And they continue to do it. We talked about this band of brothers. That's the name of the offensive line. This is where you lean on them. You get down inside the five yard line, you lean on this offensive line, get the tight ends, block it upright, hand it off to Samuels. Jalen Samuels trying to cut the corner on the near sideline, ran into the boundary. And Grant Dawson, Wendell Dunn combine on the stop. Dunn, four-year starter at defensive end, second-year captain. Just doing a good job of penetrating, getting up the field, forcing the ball to bubble. And when you make the ball bubble, they can go east and west. That allows the defense enough time to go and make the play. Or like we say, let the cavalry come. That's what Wake Forest did on that last one. Fourth tackle for loss for that Wake defense. They had seven last week at Syracuse. Third down, goal to go. Finley looking to the end zone. He'll lob it there, incomplete. Intended for Samuels, no penalty flags. 
Justin Sternod, who had a fourth quarter interception last week, was in on the coverage, number 23 in black. Yeah, when you see 23 in Justin Sternod, it's all about coverage. And the coverage was on Jalen Samuels. They know where the ball was going. That's a terrific job of being aware of who the playmaker is in that spot in Wake Forest, forcing a field goal. Kyle Bambard, snake bitten the last few years. This is a 25 yard attempt. And it's sideways, but it goes through. Kyle Bambard missed that 33 yarder at Clemson last year, ties the game at 24. Welcome back to ESPN Football Primetime, presented by Dr. Pepper. 100 miles separate these two universities. Nothing separating them on the scoreboard right now. We are tied up at 24 after the 25-yard field goal by Kyle Bambard. Good for that young man because he has had a tough career. The, the social media has been kind to him after that missed kick against Clemson last year. He had the wind at his back, was able to tie this one up for the fourth time tonight. Good return for Chuck Wade. Wake Forest will have it at the 27 yard line, 111th meeting. NC State on a winning streak in this series, but the home team has fared well the last 20 times these two have gotten together. It's a rivalry, and you want to lean on your home crowd, but I see a lot of red out there as well for NC State. It's almost, I won't say it's neutral, but with each big play, you can hear each fan base loud and clear. <laughs> Wolford caught by Serene. Oh, and he takes a hit. Yep, here come the flags. It's a late hit. Might be on uh, Chris Ingram, number 15, the true freshman. Personal foul, late hit, defense, number 15. 15-yard yep. 15 penalties, first down. It's right there at the end. That's a freshman mistake. That's a true freshman, well out of bounds. That's a freshman penalty right there. It costs his team 15 yards. You have a shove by Fernandez. You know, that was even borderline, but for sure the hit at the waist by Ingram was a penalty. And a great field position for the Demon Deacons at the 41 of the Wolfpack. Wolford, a terrific senior quarterback, is complete to Tabari Hines. Hines now seven catches, well over 100 yards, two touchdowns tonight. He's been working that slot well. He's been in the slot. He's had the coverage by Ingram, a true freshman that just had the penalty. Been playing well. Wolford on the receiver screen, well read by the defense. Jonathan Alston, the corner, makes the tackle. You see it, you go get it. That was Alston there. He saw the play, recognized it. I used to have a coach used to tell me when I was in college, if you see it, you believe it, go get it. That's what Alston, he saw that play develop. And went made the play. Colburn barely got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard more. He was dragging Jermaine Pratt, the weak side linebacker. And now it's fourth down and a long two yards. Injured Wake Forest offensive lineman there on the ground. Jake Benzinger, the right tackle. So now Dave Clausen. You know, he's probably out of field goal range here, and plus they're going into the wind right now. See what Dave Clausen decides to do and whether he'll have his right tackle to do it with. Jake Benzinger down on the field. We'll check on him when we come back. ESPN College Football is presented by Dr. Pepper. The one fans crave. And in part by 
Old Spice. Ah! Benzinger helped off the field for Wake Forest. We're going to go for it here on fourth down and two. They're one for one on fourth down tonight. Nine for 16 on the season. The senior quarterback from Jacksonville rolling out. And it is caught by Chuck Wade, his high school teammate again. Boy, Wade uh, only had 15 catches coming into the night. He's made some big ones here this evening. Walford getting out of the pocket, creating a little bit of space, running room, throwing room, gets to Wade. And keep the drive alive, and now Wolford takes off on first down and gets to the 24. Bradley Chubb with the tackle. Couple changes there. Ulster Hage, he goes to center, so right guard moves to center. Gilliam, the backup center, goes to right guard. That's another catch by Chuck Wade. And slamming his hands to the turf, Jonathan Alston saying, how can this guy <laughs> continue to get open on this First good, down. Good job by the offensive line. We just saw Benzer, Benzinger go out. So the center, normal center, Ryan Anderson, he moves over to right tackle. It's a good job on this offensive line being able to block it up. Wolford throwing toward the end zone. Hines is there. Caught. Touchdown, Wake Forest. What a night for Tabari Hines, his third touchdown catch. That's a catch. No juggle. He completes the process. Two hands. I talked about it earlier. Two hands. He high points it, brings it down. And if I'm Dave Huxtable, defensive coordinator at NC State, I got to get some help from my true freshman, Chris Ingram, because Hines is wearing him out tonight. Blocked. That is the second week in a row that Wake Forest has had an extra point blocked. Hill and Jones coming right up the middle to block that kick by Weaver, and it stays a six-point game. But now Wake Forest is four for four in the red zone tonight, and Tabari Hines has three of the Wake Forest scores. This was a beautiful catch by the junior from Florence, South Carolina, but NC State was able to block the extra point. This has been fun here tonight, partner. I'm feeling the atmosphere. Oh, it's, it's great. It's a, this is a rivalry. You can feel it. It's great to have these two programs at the level that they're at again. NC State's going to get it back here. Down six with eight minutes to go. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> I don't know. I think the, uh, the orange polo guy... He's happy about something, right? <laughs> well, Tennessee lost again tonight. LSU this time. But he did get his way. He did get his way. No longer Butch Jones at Tennessee. The coaching search is on. <laughs> A lot of rumors swirling around. They're calling him groomers. Ah. Depending on who you ask. Let's see what you did there. Finley the handoff to Gillespie. Again, Naeem Hines. Has a return from the locker room. Kamara with a nice tackle on Gillespie after that four-yard pickup. So we'll see what NC State can do. Their special teams unit blocking that extra point could loom large. If you're NC State, you still run your offense. Nothing's changed. You continue to make drives, execute down the field. They feed it to Gillespie again. He's going to be cut down at the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss. Grant Dawson, the linebacker, and Kamara again forcing a third and long. 
Yeah, you see, anytime you see that C on the chest right there, that's a captain. That's a captain making a play. Senior from right here at Winston-Salem. So you know he, he, he understands. It's senior day here. Not the last home game for Wake, but it's senior day. And definitely Dawson making his presence felt as a senior captain. Finley with some pressure coming. Got rid of it downfield. Caught around the 45. And out of bounds, Jacoby Myers. That's a gain of 12. It'll keep the drive alive. Nice little rhythm throw from Finley. Recognizing the blitz. Takes his time. Delivers it to Myers. Gets out. And like I said, you still run your offense. I, I know that you feel like we got to play catch up, but you run your offense. Continue to do what you do well. That's these nice little short five-yard routes. Catch and run elements. Got check time for Ryan Finley in this offense. On first down, wanting to throw. Finley looping it downfield. It's a little high intended for Myers again. Finley was the opening day starter for Boise State in 2015 for his offensive coordinator now, Eli Drinkwitz, who was the offensive coordinator there at the time. And he followed Drinkwitz to NC State last year. And now they're trying to come from behind here in the fourth quarter with just over six minutes to go in Winston-Salem. NC State has two timeouts remaining. Wake Forest has all of its timeouts. It's Gavin Locklear in motion. Finley surveys the field, comes to the near side of Mecca. Amizi is going to be thrown down. A couple of yards short. The first down marker, Jasir Taylor, the true freshman, number 24. He has played better tonight, and now it's third down and about two and a half. You know, before the game started, we knew that we found out that Duke Edgefor, the pass rusher for Wake, was not going to play. And there is not the same pass rush without Duke in there. A ton of time for Finley of the last couple plays, being able to scan the defense, let the routes develop, and throw the football. Completed a strike to Myers on the last third down attempt. They run it this time. And it's going to be real close. Gillespie, it appears, was stopped short. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down. Fourth and inches. Yeah, they're going for it, though. This isn't fun time. It's You're going for it here. And I'm saying QB sneak. You line these guys up right here. Oh, what a smart play by Finley to bounce it to the outside, but did he get enough? Let me see that far side official spot. Where has he put the ball at? Cameron Glenn with the tackle right at the line. Wow. They're going to have to measure. From my vantage point, wow, I'm still, I'm still debating. It's going to be close. It looks like he may have it by, I think, quarter length of a football. Good job by Wake Forest recognizing the QB sneak where they did it earlier. That time they stacked right next to the field, the A-gaps next to the center. Finley recognized it and took it off tackle. Probably wait, maybe what they needed for the first down. When Finley bounced to the outside, it looked like he had all kinds of elbow room, but then it closed quickly, and Glenn made a great tackle to force this measurement. <laughs> right on. You were right. Quarter length of the football. Just enough. And he knew it. That's a good job. That's a terrific job, actually. Smart quarterback making a smart decision. He knew Wake Forest was going to crowd that line. And just the awareness, taking it off tackle, picked up a first down. Finley is physically and mentally tougher this year, according to his offensive coordinator side there on that conversion jet sweep Samuels looking for room stays on his feet gets inside the 40 out at the 38 Jalen Samuels such a weapon for Eli Drinkwitz you know he was I was asking have you ever had a player like that he talked about a couple NFL guys he's had JC JD McKissick with the Seattle Seahawks or Jeremy McNichols, who he had at Boise State.
These are certain players that you don't really have a position for them. You just call them playmakers. You just get them the ball. That's what Samuels has done all night long. Wherever you line them up at, just get them the ball. Fake the toss. Finley now running around. Still looking downfield. He's in trouble, and he's going to have to step out of bounds. And now it's going to be third and fairly long for the junior quarterback from Phoenix. Yarberry forced him out. That is the first sack tonight by the Wake Forest defense. And only the 12th allowed all year by that NC State offensive line. Third down and seven. Here's Samuels. Ryan Finley. A rope caught by Amizi. And he got it. First down, NC State. Huge reception again for the rookie. You find who's going to be the guys to step up. And sometimes it's the guy who you probably least expected. It's a true freshman. Amizi with a terrific catch. Picked up the first down. Throwing again. Finley. Contact. No flags. He went for Kelvin Harmon, but Taylor, the cornerback, standing his ground. Yeah, Taylor doing a good job. Sort of panicked there at the end, but it's such an, an errant pass. Had that pass been on the mark, I think you possibly would have gotten a pass interference, but by it sailing so deep, far over his head, end up being good defense by Taylor. Gillespie in the backfield. This will be the 12th play of the series. Boy, NC State has had some long drives tonight. It is Gillespie spinning out of the initial hit. And he gets to the 26-yard line. It'll be third down. Coming up on Sports Center tonight at 1.30 a.m. on ESPN. Baker Mayfield with a bad decision today. And he apologized for it. Mel Kuyper, Jr., Kirk Herbstreit, they're going to weigh in on who's considered the better NFL prospect, Josh Rosen or Sam Darnold, as they lock horns tonight. And they're going to talk about the Heisman race as well. Linda Cohen, Kevin Connors tonight. Huge third down again for the Wolfpack. Gillespie hit. Got the first down to the outside. On his feet to the 10-yard line where he's finally wrestled down. What a run for Reggie Gillespie, who's filling in for Hines. Yeah, Reggie just going off right tackle. Showed a little patience, make guys miss, setting up blocks. It's a nice run. Under two minutes to play. Finley, complete. Amizi, what a move! Lost the football! Wake Forest recovers, it's a touchback. Demetrius Camp got on the loose ball as Amizi lost it going toward the end zone. It's Amizi sticking that ball out. And that's just a, a great job knocking it out. It's Demetrius Kemp. And he goes right for the forearm. He goes right for the forearm. Dislodges that football. No, Bill Belichick, New England Patriots head coach, always talks about when you get near the goal line, just tuck the ball. Don't stick it out. Rolling on the field. There's a fumble recovered at the half-yard line. Recovered in the end zone for a touchback. That play is under further review. Now they're going to look at it again to yeah. make sure that Amizi did not cross the plane with that football. No, the tip of that ball, that's what I looked at first. Where's the tip of that football? It didn't make it. And... The Wake Forest fans here, they're seeing a replay on the scoreboard, and they know it. That's why they continue to cheer about it. You know, I was talking about Bill Belichick, New England Patriots head coach. This is what he preaches. When you get around that goal line, put two hands on it. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. That's a huge mistake. Freshman mistake. You can see the sheer emotion on Amizi's face.
He made a great catch for a touchdown earlier tonight. Back in the third quarter, but here, a mistake reaching for the goal line. It was popped out. Wake Forest recovers in the end zone for a touchback. It wasn't because of effort. And you see the emotions right there. That's a true freshman. That's the emotions. But now, guess what? You still got football left. You got to rely on your defense. You got to rely on Chubb, that defensive line. You got timeouts left. Get that ball back one more time to your offense. They're going to keep it on the ground because now the clock is their friend. NC State, only eight turnovers coming into the night. They've had two huge giveaways in this football game. And there's a timeout. Ameka Amizi, the true freshman out of Waxhaw, North Carolina, and a big play for that Wake defense. Number 34, Demetrius Kemp, the guy with the hair there. Yeah. He nice is the dude. player of the game. Eight tackles, seven solo tackles, a quarterback hurry, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. A minute 40 to go as Wolford keeps it. And a third down for Wake Forest as NC State calls the timeout. And they're out of timeouts. Now with the win today for Miami, they stay undefeated. The next game coming up, day after Thanksgiving against Pitt on the road, ABC Friday, noon Eastern. And then the battle between South Florida and UCF, who's still undefeated on ABC. Friday, 3 Eastern, 1230 Pacific. They call that the war on I-4. It should be good. Well, Scott Frost has done a great job. Oh, yeah. It's a hot name in the coaching. On a lot of people's short list. <laughs> yeah, the, ser the searches are going on in some of these schools, and the Scott Frost name comes up. Well, there's a guy that's sick to his stomach right now, Mecca Amizi. It's one of those plays that's a true freshman. You remember that your entire career. You, you get an opportunity again like that, you're going to keep two hands on the football. And I really believe if he held on to that ball, he would have fallen into the end zone yep. for a touchdown. Just that extra effort at the end. Good job by Kemp, like you mentioned, knocking it out. And that would have tied the game, and all they would have needed was the extra point to go ahead. Mike Forrest had their last extra point blocked. Colburn behind a block. Going to be hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. Justin Jones on the tackle. Wait for us, just let this clock go. Down to one second, use your timeout. But you gotta remember, they've already blocked the one today. NC State's gonna come after this football. They're gonna try to get a block. That's what Wake's doing right now. They're over on the sideline and they're talking protection on the punt. Let it run all the way down. One second. Don Maggio coming on for a very important punt for Dave Clausen's team. NC State very good at blocking kicks, specifically number 95, Tyrone Riley. I'm sure Dave Doran's Unit's going to come all out. Yeah, they know the pressure's coming. They know. Wake Forest knows the pressure is coming. So the first thing is what you do is what I was always taught. Hey, we protect first. Let's protect first, then go cover. Don't worry about getting out. Don't worry about trying to go down and make a tackle. You protect first, and then go make a play. Don Maggio, third team all ACC last year's dad Kirk an all-american punter at UCLA this is his fifth kick back to return at the 45 yard line Gavin Locklear it's gonna bounce it's gonna roll to the 45 and that's where Locklear will smother it 
And there's 41 seconds for NC State to work with. They don't have any timeouts. This is the play of the game right now. Yeah, they're just making a play as a true freshman, but just extending that ball at the end. Demetrius Kemp, watch how he attacks that ball. It attacks the forearm, ball comes loose, he recovers. That's truly the play of the game right there. You see the emotions of a true freshman. No, he had the game-winning possible touchdown. Possibly could have won it. He's on the field here at this critical time. Bottom of your screen, Samuels is in the slot. Finley, they have to work fast. To the outside, it's incomplete. Intended for Myers. There's a flag. This might be a late hit on Wake Forest. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 90, 15 yards, first down. That's going to be on Kamara for the late hit. That may be a completion. First of all, you get that personal foul at the end, roughing the passer. But I think you take the, you take the penalty anyway. Well, that could be a completion. They're going to look at it upstairs. It would be a completed pass and then the penalty on top of it. So this could be a real field day here for the NC State offense, which doesn't have any timeouts to work with, and down six points. Yeah, it's a terrific job of having body control, grabbing with the, with the hands out of the air, and watch the process all the way through. Watch him catch it. See the control all the way through. I got to believe that's a catch. Jacoby Myers right there is just showing off. Look at that. That's, that's an NFL-type catch right there. I know you can need two inbounds in the NFL. You only need one in college football. But I saw foot down and control throughout the process of the catch. I think that one's going to want to stand there as a, well, not stand. That should have now be a catch. Should be overturned. Yep. Overturned of, of an incompletion. Now you get the ink. Now you get a completed catch plus the penalty. Mark McEnany is the replay official, and they're looking for indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, which was an incompletion. I, I think they may be seeing it. And then Kamara with the roughing the passer penalty. Now attack on 15 more. Yeah, that's that's a catch. The more and more you see it, it's a good job. So be around the 30-yard line if what we think is going to happen comes down from the replay official Mark McEnany, which would be terrific news for the Wolfpack. Terrific job by Myers, though. Just not only the catch, but we're talking about some of the guys that had to make plays today. So Naeem Hines hasn't been able to return to the game. Samuels has been himself the, the normal playmaker for the offense, but it's been the other guys making plays tonight has really helped this offense for NC State. Here's Jeff Heiser. After further review, the receiver caught the pass at the 46-yard line. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced from there. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Clock will be on the snap. What a sequence. That leads to a big break for NC State. First down at the 31 yard line with 36 seconds to go. Myers is credited with the catch. Terrific job staying in bounds. And a 15 yard penalty to boot. NC State down six. Trying to get their eighth win of the year. Finley pumps all kinds of time, directing traffic. There's a flag coming back for the catch. It was Harmon when it went through his hands. 
I think we're going to hold here. Holding offense, number 53, 10 yard penalty, first down. He had all kinds of time. They can get the hold right here. There he is, 53. Tyler Jones. Nice little spin move by Basham. Go right in front of the official. He throws the flag. Backs him up to the 41. 25 seconds to play. It's complete. Caught by Gillespie. They've got to hurry. No timeouts. That's Clock not the, is running. That's not the throw you wanted. You wanted to get that to the sideline. You wanted to go out of bounds. Now you're forced to run a quick play. Have to throw it to the sideline here. Finley. Looking toward the end zone. He's going to lob it that way. Throw is intercepted. Isang Bassing picks it off. And Wake Forest is going to get a win. How about this Wake defense tonight, Kirk? Third turnover forced, and they've all been clutch. They stood tall. They've intercepted a quarterback who doesn't throw interceptions as they carry Mr. Bassey out. Are they carrying him they carry off him. the field? Well, the way he played tonight, you got to carry him off. Only a sophomore, but wow, he did he come up big tonight for Wake Forest. This is a big win. Wake Forest ends North Carolina State's three-game winning streak in this series. They get their seventh win of the year. They're fourth in league play, and this is Bassey sealing it with the pick. Just standing in front of cutting Harmon off. Just knowing where he's at on the field. And he goes up, high points it, grabs it with his hands. I like seeing that you grab it with your hands, bring it down, and then celebrate with your friends, celebrate with your teammates on a big interstate rivalry win. That's big. NC State, which was clinging to hopes for a big bowl game, maybe even the Orange Bowl, suffers a tough loss here tonight on the road, 30 to 24. It's a big game. It's a big win for Wake Forest. Head coach Dave Clawson, this is what he talked about, bringing the Wake back. They get to seven wins, and they're, they're not done yet. They're not finished yet. Walford talk about leaving a legacy. This is the legacy that he wants to leave here at Wake, winning big games like this. They've got Duke next week. They force three big turnovers and get the win, 30-24. to 24.